Um, we started this road to in June and the goal was to have a conversation with industry and we're joined by our uh, eight Bureau of Administration partners um, and, and so that we could really come out and have an engaging dialogue, um, not just present, obviously we have a little presentation here, but the real goal for us with the roadshow was Morning. find out you know, how we can be more collaborative we really want to be leaders in in the government. I mean, much like much like the SAME uh, values and mission and goals of building leaders. For government. Sorry. Sorry, my computer keeps. I, I think every time someone comes on, I get muted. Um, sorry, guys. Uh, I don't know where I muted. So um, I'm going to just, we, we at State, very much like SAME, want to position ourselves to be leaders, like you guys want to build leaders. Um, and we want to lead collaborative efforts um, to represent the best in our government. And we do that, we do that best by working with people like SAME, organizations like SAME, um, that bring so many partners together in this space to do to, to make sure that opportunities are available for you and to make sure that we're hearing from industry. So while we do have slides today, we really hope this is a conversation, um, you know, and that we get to hear directly from you guys on some of the issues or positive things that you guys feel like we're doing at the State Department. Um, we are joined by our Bureau of Administration colleagues because without them, none of this work would be possible. Um, and, and so we're excited to sort of co-present to you guys our program, um, talk to you about some current initiatives, um, and then have you guys and then answer some questions from you. Um, I do want to introduce our team. We have um, Henry Jardine, who is our acting director at OPO. He is joined by Dave Vivian from the Bureau of Administration. And for anybody that's followed OPO work, uh, I know that Dave Vivian is no stranger to you. So we're glad to have him with us on, on this presentation. I also have Pico Branson from our project management group and Aziz Yunes from construction management in OPO. So we've got, we're going to walk you guys through, if you go to the next slide, um, I'll just give you a sense of some of the things we'll talk about today. Um, the chat function, I think is, Lori, is that available for them right now? Can they, can they use that for the entire session? Because um, I would encourage you to do that right now so that we're not waiting till the end of the Q&A, but that we have a good sense of what's going on um, while the session's active. But we're going to talk to you guys about, um, about, the Office of Procurement and their focus and how they interact with the construction industry. We're gonna talk about our project acquisition and delivery methods. OBO's goals, uh, which you may have heard if you've been following us for the about, about the past year or two, security, resilience, and stewardship is still at the forefront of what we're doing. We'll talk a little bit about our program, um, contractor selection awards. We, we're proud to announce some recent awards that we wanna be sure that you guys know about. We also wanna talk about future opportunities for you all to partner with us um, and talk about some of the firms that are under our, ID, our, our IDIQ um, right now uh, that, that are working with us to do some of this important work for us. And then Q&A time. So um, definitely use the chat function now. Um, we'll be monitoring that throughout. Um, I'm excited to welcome Henry Jardine and I will pass it over to him to get us started. Um, Christine, th th thank you very much, and, and uh, Lori, thank you as well for the opportunity for OBO to again continue its engagement with the SAME and, and to be joined by, you know, again, our partners here in the Department of State, the, the Office of the Proc Procurement Executive, which you, you know, helps us in engaging with the private sector and doing our contracting. Um, you know, again, we've, we've been engaged, and I personally you know, have had the pleasure of being part of the um, the executive advisory group during the course of the year, but we've had other engagements with uh, various uh, committees, groupings, and activities of the SAME, uh, whether it's on sort of technical um, discussions, recruiting efforts, and, and, and so on. And it's been very valuable for us to have these dialogues because I think we share many
Sorry, I think my microphone may have cut out. I hope hope you can hear me now. Yes, we can hear you now. I thought it was great. <laughs> yeah, I think there's we've had some slight. Yeah, I don't know why the audio is that way. So we'll just be patient. And Henry, you cut out again. Yeah, Lori, I you think if the, that, that noise mutes us. If it's possible for you to mute the sign on beep, I think that might be helpful. I don't know if it is, but I'll try to do that. That might be outside of this program's skill set, but yeah. I will certainly try. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been noticing if people come on like six or seven at a time, it will automatically mute everyone. Okay, so. I'm going to mute all and then just bring unmute Henry. So let's see if that works. Use your phone if you call him. Yeah. One moment. Okay. Can you hear me now? Uh, yes, I can. Okay, great. And I'm the only one unmuted, so hopefully somebody pings me. Hopefully we're good. Yeah, hopefully we're good now. We can but hear again, you. Yes. Okay, great. So again, I just wanted to highlight you know, how we, we are sort of finishing up this year's roadshow with SAME because of the importance of the relationship and how extensive our engagement has been with SAME. Um, again, our goal is it, through the year has been really to just explain more to industry about what OVO is, how we work, and also to do it in partnership with our Office of Procurement Executive um, because they're the ones who, who really facilitate the contracting piece. And so we do it in partnership with them. And the goal hopefully is, is that we'll see more interest in the work that we're doing, broaden our contractor pool, and, and be able to really have a good dialogue and exchange with industry. Um, so with that, I think we can go to the next slide. And I think, yeah, and so I'll throw it over to Dave to talk a little bit about, um, you know, the procurement executive and its work and vision and how it facilitates the work that we do. Uh, Dave. Okay, uh, thank you, Henry. Uh, this is Dave Vivian. I'm a contracting officer and branch chief uh, working for the Office of the Procurement Executive. Uh, of course, our mission is to provide uh, management and leadership support for the uh, department-wide acquisition program. Um, and the, the federal assistance program as well we have here at the Department of State. Um, the uh, procurement executive, of course, is responsible for you know, training the workforce. We have about 200, uh, more than 200, contracting officers and contracting specialists supporting the Department of State worldwide. Um, and we, of course, look forward to giving uh, the entire department a, uh, uh, a, a pleasant acquisition experience while they're working with us. Uh, next slide, please. And um, we have uh, other divisions within the uh, Department of State's acquisition uh, team, uh, but the uh, division that uh, I work for supports OBOs, while other divisions support uh, diplomatic security, they support uh, consular programs and you know, the entire mission for the Department of State to ensure it has the commercial support to accomplish the uh, diplomatic mission overseas and here in the United States. Uh, the faci Facilities Design and Construction Branch is my division. Um, I'm a branch chief there. Bob Powell is the division director. There's also Jim Thomas and uh, Ed Barron are branch chiefs. But Jim and I share the construction workload. Um, um, uh, Ed Barron's group handles some. But uh, my section is also the architectural engineering support uh, branch. So we provide all of the uh, design contracts, all of the engineering contracts uh, that the department needs, as well as handling the care of the construction acquisitions as well. Um, I do have a number of listings that I can share with people. If you send me an email, we'll share my email, I'm sure, later on during the uh, presentation. 
But uh, if you are interested in working with the Department of State, I can share those listings with you and maybe you can find an avenue in as a prime contractor or as a subcontractor. Um, thank you, that concludes my presentation. Um, back to you, Henry. Okay, Dave, thank you very much. So, you know, again, um, work very closely with OPE and, and Dave's team on the contracting piece. And just to clarify what OBO is and, you know, what we do, uh, ultimately we are the bureau within the Department of State that provides the facilities, the platform for us to be able to do our diplomacy overseas. And again, you can see what our mission statement is here. Um, we want to make sure that the people working overseas are safe, that the facilities they have will, will be resilient, will function for an extended period and allow them to do their jobs effectively. Um, while we do focus a lot on security, the reality is we need to engage effectively. So we have to balance the idea of security with that engagement with the diplomatic outreach that we wanna do. And at the same time that we're doing the diplomatic outreach, we also recognize that the facilities platform that we construct, that we sustain or maintain, also represents the US. It's not just a building, but it, it sort of encapsulates and reflects the United States and our values. So it's a balancing of a, a number of different elements when we do our work globally. Uh, next slide. So in that balance, you can see these components, these elements, you know, again, as you know, security is critical to what we do. We have to make sure that people are safe, but we also have to make sure that facilities can last, that they can deal with the various environments, conditions, whether it's political, uh, again, environmental, climactic, uh, there's a host of different factors. Also missions change. Uh, you may find that embassies might be doing consular work extensively, but then that will change, such as in Korea and South Korea, where we had you know, the visa waiver program, uh, the program there went from doing thousands of visas to much, much less. And so you'll see changes as, as the requirements, the mission changes, and we have to build facilities that can support that. And we also want to do it in a way that's smart, that, uh, you know, saves the U.S. taxpayer, incorporates some of the latest technologies that's more efficient in how we work. Uh, so these are all the different components of our, our engagement, our, our, you know, our work and how we do, do our mission. Next slide. Because again, you, you know, as you can see, we're working globally, um, pretty much almost in every country. Um, and we have uh, embassies, consulates, so in some places like Mexico, you know, representation across the country. Um, and again, we're also not just providing buildings, but also residences. And we have to be very sensitive to those because it impacts the morale and safety of individuals overseas. And again, you can see the scale and scope of that, um, that portfolio. The other thing to keep in mind is we also have significant cultural um, artifacts and, and assets overseas. Uh, in fact, this year we're celebrating the 200th anniversary of the Tangiers Legation, which is our oldest facility. Um, and again, that's a facility that we um, you know, work with a private organization in maintaining. So just a broad scope of, of, um, of a portfolio that we have to support internationally. Next slide. And as you can see, the, the annual budget um, is over $3 billion, and it's pretty consistent year on, year out in the last few years. And we do get support, I think, across, uh, you know, the Hill, the Congress, uh, both, um, you know, Democrats and Republicans are very supportive of what we do. Um, so we get bipartisan support in, in our efforts. And, and our work is supported, I think, across administrations, uh, because I think it's recognized the importance of what we do in providing that platform. Next slide. And again, you know, we have a number of ongoing projects and those projects, as you can see, the capital security construction projects are essentially those embassies and consulates that we're building, or in some cases, marine uh, security residences or other uh, residences, but primarily it's the new embassy buildings, such as uh, we just completed a, an embassy in Maputo and earlier this year in Niamey. Uh, we have ongoing constructions again in many places, whether it's in Mexico City or in Guatemala or in New Delhi, so quite extensive work uh, that we're doing. In addition to building new facilities, we also have to try to maintain the existing ones. And so we do some major renovations in some of our older, more, um, you know, in, in a way, historic uh, facilities, such in Athens, which is a very noted um, property that was you know, built in the post-war period and is, is um, one that we want to preserve and, and enhance for, for many more decades. So we have an ongoing project there. Uh, similarly in Montevideo. Um, and then we, we do security upgrades and a range of other projects, uh, just, just 
roofing projects, elevator projects, a host of any maintenance projects that are typical of, of a facility. And then again, we, we are also involved very much in, in real estate housing. Uh, majority of our residences are leased, but we also have some government owned properties. Um, next slide. And this just gives you a sort of a snapshot of how the program has evolved. Our programs have essentially evolved in relation to various uh, challenges, uh, threats, and security issues we've seen globally really kicking off or after the, um, uh, the Beirut bombings in 1983. And during that period, there was sort of the review of the um, security uh, of our facilities and found that we, our facilities essentially had very limited security measures. Many of them were right on major roads in the centers of cities uh, with no, no mitigations. Uh, so there was the Inman report, which made recommendations, and we had a number of embassies that were constructed based on the guidance under the Inman report. You can see Caracas, Bangkok. We also had issues. Hi, can you guys hear me? Um, I think Henry's my cutout. Yes, we can hear you, Christy. Okay, can you hear me now? Yep. We can hear you now, Henry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, as, as you can see in this slide. Ooh. Cut out again. Henry, you seem to have cut out again. Christy, can you hear me? Okay. So, okay. Hi. Sorry about that. Did, did Can you hear me now? Yep. Okay. Yeah, it just was cutting in and out. Um, so, essentially, this slide just shows the evolution of our program and how the funding has increased dramatically over, over the years to respond to security conditions and, and other threats. Uh, next slide. And then finally, you know, just in closing, you can see here, you know, as we think about the evolution of the program, we're thinking about how we can enhance our work, uh, approaches that we can take, earlier contractor engagement, um, how we can use data more effectively, uh, also thinking about the skill sets we need um, and what approaches we should take in our hiring and recruiting. Uh, on the innovating side, you know, working with academia and others to think about the new technologies that we could maybe incorporate, whether it's in um, looking at uh, off-site manufacture, modular, uh, mass timber, and other approaches, getting a sense of where the industry is going through dialogue with, with various uh, leading organizations. And then also exploring how we really do have a significant impact on the ground when we think about new facilities. What is that what kind of in, um, relationship are they having with their with the surroundings, the community? Uh, the U.S. Embassy in London is a classic case of where you know we, we built a new facility in what was an old brownfield site, and now it's a really dynamic, growing part of London. It's and it's being transformed primarily because of the anchor effect of the, of the embassy there, and this is happening in other places too, such as in in Pristina and Kosovo, and so it it really is uh, becoming a, an anchor for many. Uh, urban centers, but also the technologies at those embassies and facilities in some places, they're being an opportunity for us to, to highlight those approaches and, and informing, you know, approaches for, for the local industry. So when we talk about new environmental or climate uh, technologies, such as what we're introducing in some of the African posts in, in um, again, as I mentioned, Maputo, Windhoek, and elsewhere, um, that is hopefully uh, creating a model for, for those governments, those, those countries to follow. Uh, so that essentially gives you a sense of our program, you know, from soup to nuts, what our mission is, how we try to do our mission, how, extensive, how extensively we operate, what our budget looks like. And um, again, I think it's a very exciting program and, and certainly one that I hope others will, will want to engage with. Um, and I should just say in closing, um, 
this will probably be my last engagement with SAME. I, I will be finishing my assignment here as the acting director of OBO, and we'll be welcoming uh, Ambassador William Moser uh, who, to lead OBO. Ambassador William Moser had previously been the principal deputy director before my arrival to OBO, and uh, he just recently finished up his assignment in Kazakhstan as the ambassador there. So he's very experienced with the work that OBO does and uh, very experienced with the work that SAME does, and, and I'm sure we'll continue this close cooperation with SAME. So, you know, again, thank you for the opportunity to uh, work with SAME through the past year and um, and for this program today and, and look forward for more collaboration. So with that, I think I'll go ahead and pass it off to Aziz, Aziz Yunus to talk a little bit about the um, project delivery method. Yeah, good morning, uh, I'm Aziz Yunus. I'm the director for the Office of Construction Management. I do have a few slides to share with you today. As Henry mentioned, we have few billions to spend every year. Congress wants us to spend it. As soon as these projects are awarded by OPE, AQM, Dave Vivian, and, uh, and this shop, we do go and start executing. Here we're going to discuss quickly what we, many of you know that these are our project, uh, these are our standard project delivery methods. We've been using them for a while, at least for the past uh, 20 plus years. The design build with bridging documents is our default system. We have also the design bid build. We're starting out of scratch also. We're going to try this uh, pilot program. And the design build is, uh, 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 is the other uh, system. Design build is, the, is a design build with, without the bridging documents to get that thing also going. That's the one that we're going to pilot uh, with. We do have some projects going on right now for design bit build and that's uh, ongoing, but we're trying to do less of those as much as we can. We have also started uh, last year to go with the construction manager as constructors and we have Hanoi, our first pilot program using this delivery uh, method and uh, many of you I'm sure familiar with this uh, kind of mechanism. We're gonna see how successful this will be and to see if we can do more in the program and include it also in our uh, portfolio. Next. The contractor selection and awards, um, as you know, we do have two types of, uh, of award, the best value trade-off and the lowest price technically acceptable. So, you know, the mission also from, from OBO and also the OIG and GAO is we need to expand our pool of contractors who works our program. Uh, our program is not that simple, as you all know. Each country has its own challenges and so on, its own risks, and we need to have more contractors to participate in the program and build uh, uh, these monuments that we build all over the world. So we're, uh, you know, we're constantly talking to the AGC, DBIAs, and uh, here in this form, just to, in this forum, just to increase and encourage people to participate in our program and. Uh, uh, you know, and, and take a piece of the pie. Next. Two years ago, also, we started uh, using partnering approach. Uh, we did have, you know, some issues on some projects, sometimes communications, uh, you know, gets in the way. So in order for us to um, make this communication program more successful, we have uh, approached the, uh, you know, the partnering uh, institute and we're uh, right now, used it also on two projects and being proved to be successful and uh, able to save us uh, uh, you know um, lots of heartache at least to us and the contractors so now we mandated to use this on all projects five millions and over and we're starting we have already established also a specification section in division one that's already uh, developed and in place for us how to apply it to be uh, you know, to be beneficial for both the government and for the uh, contractors in our program. Next, please. And this is some of the information. This is the first time we bring this information up and to make it that's already been incorporated in our FY21 uh, program. And you can see here, I'm not going to read the slide for you, but uh, you can see that uh, the, uh, the, 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 the partnering effort is going to be paid by the U.S. government and will be, uh, you know, co coordinated with the contractor to choose the facilitator who can work best and agree also on the uh, framework on how this process is going to work 
you know, across the, uh, the contract. And as soon as we sign a contract, that's when the process starts to make sure that this is uh, a successful uh, program. I'm sure many of you in the private sector and in other government agencies use these scenarios. For us, we're trying to use it now uh, more moving forward. Next, please. This is just some information about why contractors with us succeed overseas. We did have some failures. We did have some successful, uh, um, you know, events. And there are lots of factors. We, I just want to highlight here some of the factors that sometimes get in the way, you know, of getting a, uh, you know, successful project or, or um, you know, business out there and why sometimes contractors struggle and sometimes they reach the, uh, not the exact, uh, Conclusion, uh, you know, strong understanding of the department's uh, security requirements is a key. Uh, you know, each country has its own requirements, and our security more or less remains the same. But dealing with certain individual or certain nations can impact, you know, the labor force that the contractor planning to hire or to use in those uh, places. Um, the contractors that focus on implementing. The schedule, those people do succeed, take it seriously and not uh, ignore the schedule and just wing it. And sometimes, unfortunately, these things do happen. Having the flexibility of able to adjust the schedule as they go and with some uh, challenges that, uh, you know, comes up a lot. Aziz, we lost your audio. I think we hear you again. Can you hear me? Am I still in? Yes, you're there. Okay, thanks. Also, sometimes they don't. Okay, am I back? Yep. We hear you. Or we did. Looks like you're open. So Lori, whenever people are coming in and out in groups, yeah. it just mutes everybody and you actually can't unmute. It just circles. So I don't know if there's any way to like- I have to, I've muted yeah. everybody and I've muted the button. I just don't know. I, I, it's unfortunately not available for people to- do. Yeah, I, I think it's the beep. So it's the notification when people come on and it's, I've noticed it's if, if it's two or three people leave at the same time, it just turns the mute thing on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can Aziz, I don't know if you want to try now. You should be back. Maybe not. Um, Pete, do you want to just pick it up from here? And then. Yeah, exactly. Okay, great. Uh, okay, so uh, let's let's go on to the next slide. Okay, one minute. There I go. All right. So uh, essentially, the uh, um, what this slide is showing is uh, basically we've had uh, you know the last year, last year and a half has been difficult for everyone throughout the industry, um, and we're no exception. However, we are we are uh, proud to say that uh, that uh, currently the the impact that COVID is having on our on our projects is is uh, much less than it was. Uh, you know, even even uh, this this summer, so uh, I believe uh, we only have a couple projects that are that are um, currently being affected by COVID, and we, we actually have a very high rate of uh, uh, of 
um, of, vac of vaccination on our job sites, I believe, and you know, this is Aziz's number, but I believe it's uh, up around 90%. So, uh, so currently we're doing very good with, uh, with our COVID response. Uh, next slide. All right, and this uh, this gets into to my slide. Um, just to kind of uh, introduce myself, my name is Pete Goldbranson. I'm the Project Management Unit Chief for OBO's Office of Special Projects Coordination. Um, I'm really glad that Christy invited me to talk to you all today. I'm actually a former Air Force Civil Engineer, uh, and I've been a, a senior yeah. member for almost 20 years now. So, uh, so I'm I'm glad that I got the chance to uh, to talk to you guys and. Um, I actually get uh, kind of the best part of this, uh, the best part of this presentation, because I get to talk about all the opportunities that OBO has coming up in the in the uh, in the near future. Uh, but before I get into that, let me uh, talk about these three particular projects. Um, we awarded these projects very recently, like within the last month or so. So if there's anybody out there that uh, that is part of these project teams, uh, congratulations. Uh, we awarded. Uh, the NEC in Doha, Qatar to AICI. Uh, we have awarded the Consulate General a compound in Lagos, Nigeria to Pernix Group. Uh, and the Consulate General in Milan was awarded to Cadell. So congratulations to those, to those three teams. Uh, next slide, please. All right, so what this slide shows is kind of our, so I've, I've showed you what we, just, uh, what, what we just got out the door and what we just, uh, are getting ready to, to execute. This is kind of our five-year pipeline of, uh, of capital security construction projects. The capital security program is, is kind of our, our largest projects. These are the new embassy compounds, the new consulate compounds. Um, a lot of times it'll be a marine security guard quarters or a large housing complex uh, that, that is funded by this program. Um, our five-year out, out, outlook has about 25 projects on it. Typically, we try to award about five a year. Uh, sometimes it's four, sometimes it's six, and it kind of depends on uh, what our funding level is. Uh, historically, uh, in the past five years or so, we've been averaging about 2.2 billion per year. Um, this year and next year, we're actually looking at uh, more like, let's see, it's like 3.4 billion. So uh, we've actually got got more uh, more funds to 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 award uh, in the in the short term anyway. A um, couple projects I'll highlight on this particular slide. Um, you're probably going to see coming up uh, Rio de Janeiro is uh, is very close to being awarded. Uh, you're going to probably hear about um, the long way. That's uh, that's a large project that's getting very very close. And then near and dear to my heart uh, is Hanoi, the Hanoi NEC project. Uh, we're getting ready to, to my team is trying to award a pre-construction contract. That's a construction manager as constructor um, project. Uh, we're trying to do that next in the next couple of months here. Uh, so. Um, before these projects can get awarded for construction, there's a whole uh, there's a whole lead time that goes in front of it. We have site acquisition uh, that, that that has to happen. There's a there's a planning phase that has to happen, and then of course uh, bridging design or or design, depending on uh, what, what the project uh, what 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 method we're using to execute that particular project. Um, most of these large projects uh, we award through full and open competition. Uh, not necessarily through an IDIQ contract, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, and uh, of course, the uh, and I'm going to keep hammering this, but uh, the place to find all these opportunities for OBO projects is on SAM.gov, uh, and that's where all of that that's where we advertise for all of these. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, uh, so this is another. This is probably our second largest program. Uh, on top of the money that we get for our capital security construction program each year. We get about a billion dollars uh, for our uh, for our maintenance and our major rehab program. Uh, maintenance cost sharing is is the official name of it. So these projects, there's a few things we use this this program for. Um, one thing is if you think about uh, the fact that our construction security, uh, our capital program has been going on for about 20 years or so. The projects that we first built based on that program or with those funds are now 20 years old and a lot of them need some kind of rehabilitation or some kind of renovations uh, to those to those facilities. Uh, you see uh, both both Nairobi and Kampala on this on this slide, those fall into that category. Um, there's also some projects that are on the NEC list, but they are far enough out uh, so that um, and, and they're if they're old enough facilities, you know, there's certain facilities that are, you know, maybe four-year-old facilities, uh, Dublin is a great example, where we have an NEC coming up, but the but the building itself 
uh, you know, can't wait another 10 years or another 20 years for the NEC to actually get built. So we have a major rehab uh, project for the for the existing con, uh, consulate or chancery to make sure that it can that it can bridge that gap. Uh, so I think Dublin is a is a great example. Uh, Chisinau is another one. Uh, we're we're trying to get a site for for uh, for an NEC in Chisinau, but the building is so old that uh, that we have to do something there. Uh, and then the other category that you see on this list uh, are projects that are, are are posts that are so small that they don't really uh, they're they're not large enough to to require a new embassy compound or a new consulate compound. Uh, so if you see the lease fit outs, you see uh, Bonja Luka is a good example, uh, and then Thessaloniki in Greece. Uh, but those are both small posts that really just require lease fit out projects. So so that's that's kind of what what we use this program for. Um, let's see. So uh, you know sometimes we we the, these are awarded uh, for with, with with full and open competition. And in some cases, if they're small enough, we'll use our our IDIQ contractors. Uh, which I'll get, which is a good segue to the next slide, please. Okay, so this is a list of our uh, current design build and construction IDIQ contractors. Um, we have, there, there's there's opportunities that are that are coming up for these, uh, basically every few years we, we, uh, we award a new one of these. Typically they, they last for, uh, for five years. Um, for the most part, these are for small or disadvantaged businesses. So you can see the, the various categories uh, of, of uh, IDIQ contracts that, that we currently have, uh, as well as some of the, uh, the firms that, that are currently part of those contractors. Uh, so these are these are great firms to team with and to partner with if, uh, if, this, is, if this is something that, that you want to get into. Um, and then again, once these contracts uh, come up for, for a new award, uh, we, we also at, advertise these on, on SAM.gov. So uh, next slide, please. Uh, so I showed you at the beginning the, the, three, uh, the three contracts that we have just awarded. Uh, the folks on this slide, the firms on this slide, are uh, kind of the, the, con the large, larger contractors that, uh, that have currently either qualified for, um, for construction projects with us uh, or uh, ha have, done, have done construction projects for us recently in, 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 in the past. Um, and again, these are all open source solicitations, and you can find those uh, on SAM.gov. Next slide. Then obviously, before we get into construction, we have to either do uh, a bridging design or in some cases, a, a, a full design. Uh, so these are our current design services IDIQ contracts, or I'm sorry, the firms on our design services contract. Uh, we, we, we try to get a large, a, a really good diversity of, uh, of types of architecture firms that we, that we award these, these uh, IDIQ contracts to, which allows us to, you know, it, it's a toolbox. And so we, we want to make sure that, that uh, depending on what kind of project we're trying to design, we've got the right firm that, that we can award that, that, uh, that particular project to. Uh, and, 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 and we work really hard to, to match the right firm to the, to the right project. Uh, next slide. All right, so this is kind of a smaller IDIQ contract. This is actually uh, the, the one that, that uh, my office uses most often. Um, these firms, uh, for us anyway, specialize in, um, in projects that, uh, that, that we have to build in uh, kind of special security environments. Um, they're, they're projects that, that have kind of uh, higher security design criteria. Uh, and so these, the, these firms, um, are essentially experts in our in our design criteria for that specific type of project. Uh, next slide. Uh, and this this award is fairly new. I believe it was this past summer. Uh, we awarded a support services contract. Uh, these firms uh, we t we typically task with doing things like planning studies uh, or uh, surveys, uh, due, due diligence surveys for for real estate um, for, for site site acquisitions. Uh, so the, these firms do that, those types of projects for us, or if there's a smaller project like a, um, like a mechanical uh, rehab or a, or a new chiller or a new generator somewhere, these are the types of firms that we would typically hire to do that type of work. Uh, next slide. Uh, and that's it. I will turn it back over to Christy. There we go. Go ahead, Christy. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Pete. Um, I think if you could go to the other way, yes. 
Okay. Um, so you can see some of the other firms that we have, or the other organizations that we've talked to throughout the roadshow. Um, you know, our collaboration with SAME is um, is really unparalleled. Um, I know Henry talked a little bit about some of the engagement that we have with SAME, um, but we're really excited to be at the Small Business Conference coming up. Um, we are a part of their executive advisory group. Um, we're on the service liaison call. Um, we do a lot with recruiting with you all. And um, so it's it's we're really glad that we had this opportunity to kind of close out the roadshow with SAME. Um, and these are some of the other folks that we have talked to um, and given this presentation to. Um, next slide. I do want to plug that we are going to, um, with as Henry mentioned, our new, with with our new director, Ambassador Will Moser, and uh, Michael Darius, the procurement executive, will host a closeout by the State Department. Um, obviously, it'll have to be virtual given the environment, um, but we hope that you'll join us. We are going to wrap up everything that we've heard um, from all of the organizations that we engaged with during the roadshow, um, and we're going to. Oh no, I heard a beep. <laughs> Let me know if I'm okay. muted. Um uh, we are going to close up with the we are going to close out the roadshow with all the great feedback that we got from you all and others, and talk about some of the next steps that we're going to get, going to do to take ourselves into the next fiscal year, and some improvements that we hope that you'll find relative to um, you know opportunities that we're going to advertise, ways that we're going to make sure you know about what's going on in our organization, so you can better be prepared um, to um, you know to go after opportunities that you feel like your best position to do. Um, some of the other things that that we're doing, you can you know see on this list. It's very small for me um, in my, and I'm getting older, and so small means illegible. Um, but uh, but we are, as you can tell, we're doing a lot with organizations like IFMA and preservation and resiliency and lead. Um, so if you are members of any of those organizations or going to any of those conferences, um, join us. We're always glad to hear from you and, uh, and, and get your perspective. Um, in order to see those things more clearly, if you're like me and they're too small, um, join us on social media as well as our website. All of that information is here on this page. Um, we're pretty good about promoting opportunities, conferences, and things that we're going to be at um, through all of those platforms. Um, so we also have an email distribution list that we announce opportunities and awards. Um, you know, it's like up to 10 or 12,000 uh, contacts now. Now. So if you're not one of them, um, you know, get, get on there. It's a great way. Um, we know how hard Sam uh, Sam.gov can be to navigate and get prompts for the appropriate kinds of opportunities. So we try to make sure we replicate um, through this uh, email distribution list any of the opportunities that come out that you all might be interested in. Um, okay, next slide. All right. Q&A discussion. There have been um, some questions that have already been submitted. I will just start going through those. Um, but this is a great time for you to add in um, additional comments and questions. Um, there were the, the, the two or three that I know I have right now while you guys are putting in. One was, where do we put these opportunities on our website? Um, very good question. So if you go to our, our, our the kind of wrap up of our annual plan, if you saw the map that Pete walked you through, it's our, we do six year plans plans annually. Um, so those aren't a guarantee that in those fiscal years, those projects will be awarded, but it is what we anticipate to award. Um, there's all kinds of disclaimers like the, that the funding is what we assume it is um, that fiscal year, um, that one project doesn't, you know, that there, there isn't a scope change that increases one of the project sizes. Um, there's all kinds of things that can happen in that put and take by fiscal year. But it's a good, a good indication that the project is on that map or on that six year plan over the next, you know, one to six, one to five years, that project is likely going to come out for bid. Um, so, and and I think what we've heard from you all is that the earlier you know about what's coming for bid, the better positioned you are to pre-qualify, 
and respond as a team to the RFPs. Um, so we're we're really trying to focus on that six year plan for you all as 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 a sense of what's happening in the future um, versus very specific fiscal year awards because those do change for us based on a variety of you know we're dealing with the global situation so um, you know political environments change very quickly sometimes um, and plan projects really do have to shuffle around. Um, we take a lot of pride in the fact that we are able to consistently execute our appropriation every year because of our agility and flexibility for project awards. Um, so take a look at that six-year plan that is on our on our website. Um, if you if you aren't able to locate it, um, I think it's under under work with us, um, working with us. Um, if you can't, send a note to obo-ea at state.gov and we'll get you to that to that exact place. Um, but for your information, we do update that annually towards the end of the year. So like by the end of this calendar year, we'll post the next six year plan um, that will be FY22 forward. Um, yeah, our FY23 forward. So, um, so okay, that's the first question. Another really great question was, um, how are we accommodating the return to work in our office? Are we continuing to have a portion of our team working from home? And what new requirements uh, do we need to accommodate with the crisis in Afghanistan? There's a lot going on there. Um, Henry, I might maybe turn it over to you to give us a little overview on the, the department's return to work, if you want, and, and maybe a little bit about what's going on with Afghanistan. Um, yeah, Christy, thank you very much. Um, the department, the State Department has been following very closely the guidance that the White House has been putting out that has, has changed a little bit through the course of the summer with the, the Delta variant becoming, you know, more of a concern or a question. And so in, in anticipation of what they're characterizing as a return to the workplace, we've been working consistently throughout the period. And as, as I think Pete highlighted in his, his point there, that many of our projects continued forward with uh, limited impacts, and at this point, we really only have one project that was suspended that's starting back up in, in November. And we've been fortunate to get over 90% of our contract workforce on the projects uh, vaccinated. So we are in the process of looking at sort of the next steps in returning here into the department and into our offices in Washington. Um, you know, again, many of the projects have been continuing and, and work has been ongoing because we've been able to vaccinate and be able to follow the appropriate protocols on site. Um, what we're in the process of doing now is assessing sort of what our overall mobility profile would look like, our uh, sort of use of telework. And in that assessment, um, we're also looking at, um, you know, uh, what would be the need for more people to be in the office and whether that's required or not. So we're not starting with the assumption that everybody has to be in the office. We're actually starting with the assumption that most people should be able to telework um, and be able to continue to be flexible in how they work. And then we would look at what requirements, whether access to classified or certain um, uh, software or certain information or meetings or engagements would require people going back into the office. And so in November, we're anticipating that we would then start having that process of going back into the office consistent with the White House guidance. Um, and so that's, that's sort of how the planning is going forward. There's also a requirement that by November 22nd that um, all federal employees be vaccinated. And so we've been moving in that direction as well to have everybody vaccinated. And uh, within the State Department, there's a very robust program of vaccination and encouraging folks to be vaccinated. And so again, I think we're well positioned to be able to continue the work that we're doing uh, through a combination of leveraging the technologies we have for telework, work, uh, going into the office when needed, and being vaccinated. Thanks. Oh, and I, I think you wanted me also to talk a little bit about Afghanistan and, and what we so again, you know, with the evacuation of Afghanistan, um, we secured the facilities, in, you know, the, the folks on the ground secured the facilities in line with the protocol procedures that we typically do when we when we evacuate a post. You know, again, we had more recently an evacuation of Caracas where we, we did a similar process. Um, and so when we secure a facility, we then look typically at, at some kind of arrangement with, with another government or uh, organization to provide some kind of caretaker or protective power uh, a relationship. And, and that may be something that we may be looking at doing in the future. Um, but at this point, that, that's what we've done. And, and um, again, um, it, you know, we'll, we'll hopefully have an opportunity to get more uh, insights on what the condition of our facilities are and, and approaches that we can take for se securing the facilities into the future. Over.
Okay, great. Thank you so much, Henry. Um, we also had a question that Pete was able to answer in the chat, but I do just want to overview it for anybody that's not following. Um, there was a question about um, if our uh, uh, if we have a, a contract vehicle for support services work. Um, there is a slide that has support services. Um, the, the, the presentation will be available to you all through SAME, but um, there is a slide with the firm logos on it for our new support services contract that was just awarded. And again, that's a base year with four year renewals um, and it was just awarded. So um, those teams will be in place for at least one to one to the next five years. Um, thanks for answering that one, Pete. Uh, the next one we have is if we, uh, this is coming from a firm, if we are a sub with a resilience product, mobile, deployable, electric microgrid systems, who should we contact to learn um, where to team? Um, that's a great question. I would have two recommendations for you. The first would be to sign up for a capabilities conversation with OBO. Um, even though you're not gonna be a prime firm, why that matters for you is you're gonna hear um, about what we focus on, what we care about. You're gonna meet our, um, our subject matter professionals like Pete, like Aziz and others who are gonna help you know about what we're focused on and the work that we're looking to do. And why that's helpful for you is then when you approach those firms that are on the prime contract that you should see from those lists, you can be knowledgeable about what we care about, which will help you be able to talk to them more intelligently about why you would be a value or an asset on those teams. Um, they, even though they're on that IDIQ, they are still competing for work with the other folks that are on there. So, um, you know, having a team that's really positioned to respond to our challenges with smart, innovative solutions are the teams that get a lot of significant work. So they're always looking to be positioning themselves better and stronger to answer challenges. Um, so you can help them do that by bringing your technology more appropriately to them. But come learn about us, the capabilities conversations. Um, Lauren Luckett, who is also on here, she runs our industry portfolio, but she has set up a really great way for you to ease host them I think twice a month. Um, it's any firm that's at all interested in participating in our program. You can talk about what you do so our folks learn about you and then we talk a little bit about our priorities. Um, and then I would recommend that you take that conversation and go and approach those A&Es that are on our um, a list of our IDIQs, all of them that we have, the comprehensive list is also on the website. Um, and so go through those and just spend that good BD time making the phone calls, sending your materials, let them know the names of the people that you've talked to at OBO, and that should get you some traction with them at least. Um, we don't provide contact names, although I know Viv has in the past, we don't like by course of measure give you uh, contacts at those firms, um, but you know, if you, if you approach them intelligently, you should be able to get to the right people pretty quickly. Um, I hope that answers your question and gets you all to do capabilities conversations. Um, Okay, the next one is, when does the IDIQ for small business and 8A contractors open up again for new contractors to pursue? Um, Viv, maybe I'll, I'll give that to you or Pete. Uh, yeah, actually, we're still working on awarding the latest round of uh, general construction IDIQ contracts to small business. Uh, we are still doing the source selection. We have 28 of them. Our plan was somewhat uh, sabotaged, of course, by COVID, so we're, we're, we're very late. But uh, once we get these contracts awarded, they will be uh, IDIQ contracts with a base year and five option, uh, sorry, four option years. And then, of course, we won't need these contracts again uh, for that period of time. But certainly, we will release the list of contractors once we've awarded them. And if you're looking for subcontracting opportunities, uh, you, you might contact them as well. Of course, all of our opportunities are advertised on SAM.gov, uh, which is the, the procurement uh, source for av uh, um, what pre-solicitation advertisements. Um, so keep an eye out there. But like I said, the general construction IDIQ contracts will be awarded, I'd say, within the next uh, couple of months. And then, like I said, there'll be a five-year contract. Thank you. I'm not sure if we lost Christy or not. Okay. 
um, it, it, of course, uh, like I said, if anyone wants uh, any of these listings that we're, we're speaking about, you can always send me an email. Uh, my email address is Vivian, V-I-V-I-A-N, D for David, W for Wesley, the at symbol, state.gov. Uh, Chrissy puts these listings on her um, uh, website for OBO. But once again, just send me an email and I'll get those listings to you. And most of my listings do have the original point of contact. Uh, so you can contact those people while you're looking for uh, opportunity. Over. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Viv. Sorry. So this time it just totally kicked me out. <laughs> I didn't even have a chance. And I all my chat is gone. I don't have the other questions. Um, but I think there was another there was another sorry, it's just it, yeah, it hasn't loaded my my questions in on the new chat. Um, but I think there was another question about um about Viv and uh, another upcoming award. Um I don't know if you can see it in there. It was like the last one. Hey, because hey Christy, it's, it's uh, Department of State IDAQ contracts for worldwide design, built construction and construction yes. projects. I, I think that's what Viv was just talking about, but I'll let him oh, in. Great. Perfect. Okay, sorry. And then then, then the last one that I got now is the status of the value engineering services contract. Oh, okay. I'll have to check on that. Value engineering services. Um I'm not sure if that was one of the ones that's actually in uh, reacquisition at the moment, um, but I'll have to check on that. Uh, once again, you have my email. You can shoot me an email, and I can provide uh, a more um, up-to-date status uh, once I check on the uh, uh, check with the uh, contract administrator. Okay. Hey, Chris. Hey, Viv. Also, one yeah. for um, facilities management contracts, especially for areas requiring clearances and access. Did we talk about that one yet? Mm -mm. I don't think we did. No, uh, and Viv, Viv, do you do you know anything about that one uh, specifically? I, I I've heard that I believe that this is either out for solicitation now or it's coming up soon. Uh, this is for the facility maintenance contract for like Beijing and Moscow and those those types of places. Do you, do you know anything about that, Viv? Uh, yeah, uh, that contract is its O and M contract and it is in solicitation. Um, we were going to uh, award that some time ago, but of course we have uh, some competition on that one and some of those contractors haven't uh, seen the facilities. So we've been postponing the final source selection until and, and even submission of proposals until those contractors can all get out there and have a look at these facilities. They can't travel quite yet. Uh, embassies aren't ready to accept uh, the number of visitors that would be in our um, uh, pre-proposal conference team. So um, yeah, that one's being postponed, but uh, it should come back online and we hope to get it awarded sometime in the spring. We do have the contractors though, we have the offerers, uh, so it's close to further participation, but uh, we should get it awarded to one of the contractors on the current uh, uh, listing. Uh, sometimes, like I said, this part. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Viv. And for everybody that's on, um, Lauren has posted some hopefully helpful links for you um, for IDIQ op upcoming opportunities um, in the presentation. She sent a link. Um, also has, you know, given you uh, how to register on uh, SAM.gov if, if you still need to do that for A&E opportunities. Um, there's also the distribution list link if you wanted to be, um, you know, to get information for, uh, from us on awards and groundbreaking dedications, et cetera, um, and then also capabilities conversations link. Um, so all those are there in the chat. Um, we will also make sure if SME wants to include those on the presentation that they send out, um, we will do that as well. I hope that um, if there aren't any additional questions, um, I just want to remind you all, I hope that you'll be able to join us for the closing of the Roadshow with A Bureau and OBO. Um, we believe that's going to be in sometime in mid-November. We'll before Thanksgiving. 
So we'll make sure that um, you guys have that information so that uh, so that hopefully you can join us and hear about how we've taken some of your feedback and how we're looking forward to future fiscal years. Um, also, we'll see you all at the Small Business Conference for anybody that's going to be there. Um, I know Viv and others in OVO will be there to answer questions and do a presentation on our small business approaches. Um, we have a really important mission um, on behalf of the uh, American people, um, and we cannot do it without support um, from professional organizations like SAME and firms that do work alongside us like all of you um, that either are or hope to work with us. Um, you know, we continue to know that, um, you know, without our partnerships, uh, you know, being the best in American innovation, um, you know, that we, we, we cannot deliver what we're supposed to. So um, thank you for everybody who's interested and who's worked with us and who's engaged in our program. Um, we're really proud of the of what we do um, on behalf of this country. So, Henry, I'll turn it over to you to close up. Um, Christy, thank you. Yes, and and again, you know, thanks to SAME for this opportunity to collaborate and to reach out to its various members. I do hope this was a helpful briefing and that, uh, you know, there'll be opportunities for closer collaboration with uh, many of the folks here. And again, for me, you know, I just want to thank personally uh, the opportunities to work with SAME and my, my interactions um, over the year. It's been really helpful. I've learned a lot as well. Uh, I think there was a great sharing of information on approaches to contracting, approaches to the work, uh, approaches to engaging with industry. Uh, it just really was a, a, a great experience for me. And again, um, I know that that effort or that collaboration will continue with uh, Master Will Moser when he comes on board. I'll be moving over to be the um, director for the department's uh, career uh, development and assignments, essentially uh, assignments personnel, so going from buildings to people. Um, but again, thank you for the the, the close uh, relationship and, and look forward to that continuing through uh, going forward into the future. And um, I think with that, you know, we'll go ahead and, and uh, finish up our, our program today. And I'll pass it over to um, Lori for her to close us out. Absolutely. We can't thank you guys enough for this opportunity, right? How we can interconnect um, U.S. government companies with the industry and get the best of both worlds. So thank you so much for that. To our audience, I just want to say that we are having our special Veterans Day by the American Battlements Monuments Commission on 9.30 Eastern Time on Veterans Day. And so we're going to talk about some of the ongoing efforts um, mainly focusing on the memorial now being built in Hawaii and some of that they're still looking for doing search and recovery and trying to find people that are still missing. So um, to that end, thank you everybody for this. This will be available on um, on our link page. So you could see all the, uh, you might not see a lot of the chat window stuff, but I know the rest of the recording will be available for everybody, but we'll make sure we get that information out to people. Okay, thank you all and again, Appreciate that. And everybody have a great week. Take care. Thank you. Thanks for hosting us. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.